Hello, welcome to this short tutorial dedicated to OpenShot Video Editor, a free to use open source product that allows you to make your own videos quickly and easily. Also, in case you start from a beginner level. It is available for all major platforms on Windows, Mac, and Linux. OpenShot has a very easy user interface that includes the Project Files panel on the left, the video preview on the right, and the project timeline at the bottom. Now let's see how to realize a video. At first, the project is completely empty. You can add your own media files by either using the Import Files button on top or dragging and dropping these from your folders directly into the Project Files panel. This lists your files with name and thumbnails, organizing these by video, audio, and image files. Once added, you can drop these files on the timeline. These are represented as blocks called clips contained inside several tracks and composing your final video. By default, you have five tracks available, but you can add or remove any with the options under the arrow button on the left. These tracks welcome both visual and audio content, complete with file name and thumbnails. You can also switch to audio waveforms by right-clicking on any clip and going to Display, Show Waveform. This shows the envelope of the volume level through time. To check the content on the timeline, you can hold down the Control or Command key and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out around the red marker. Hold down the Alt or Option key to move through time instead. To check the content in detail, you have to use the video preview on the right. This shows the result of the timeline content that is under the red playhead that you can replace and drag through time to see different frames. Whereas to play back all the audio, use the player below the preview. You can adjust the preview properties such as size and frame rate by going to Choose Profile on top. Let's see how to edit the timeline clips. You can click on a clip to select it and move it through time in the same track or in a different one. These multiple tracks allow you to get different clips overlapping in time and set their order of visibility. All the clips placed on the top tracks are put in front of all the others on lower tracks. You can also click and drag the clip edges to adjust its duration. In case of videos and audio clips, this operation also cuts part of the content. To copy and paste any selected clip, just use Control or Command, and C or V respectively. The pasted clip is put right after the red marker in time. Whereas to delete any selected clip, just use the backspace key, using Control or Command and Z to undo. Moreover, if you right click on a clip and go to Properties, you get the list of all the clip properties you can adjust, such as cropping, positioning, rotating, scaling, and shearing. You can also use Scale to set the way to get rid of the black bars automatically by either stretching the clip or cropping it. Whereas use Volume to adjust the volume level. To edit these values, you can either drag on these or double click and type in directly, applying with the Enter key. Some of these properties are applied statically on the whole clip but some others change through time becoming green in color and creating keyframes. Keyframes are green markers placed on fixed instance of time on the clip that save the current property value set. This way, if you place multiple keyframes in time, you create a transition where the property changes according to the values saved by such markers. By default, 
Each clip has one keyframe placed at the very beginning of it, saving all the default property values. If you place the playhead on another instant of time and change the property, a second keyframe is created, making a transition between the default and the current keyframe. With the playhead on the keyframe interested, you can right click on the property and change the transition envelope or remove the keyframe you are on. Whereas if you prefer to edit the same property without adding any keyframe, just place the playhead on the default keyframe at the beginning of the clip and edit its value. This way, no keyframes and no transitions will be applied. Besides the Properties panel, you can right-click on the clip to apply other options, such as quick animations, video and audio speed rate under time, and basic clip editing with Transform, moving and scaling the clip on the preview directly. You can also go to Separate Audio to separate the audio content from the video frames, making these two independent. Whereas if you want to split any clip, it is easier to enable the Razor tool and click on the clip directly. With OpenShot, you can also apply great visual and audio transitions to introduce and end content with nice effects. When you right-click on any clip, you can go to Fade to apply fade transitions that change the transparency level of the clip in time, or to Volume to add audio transitions that change the volume level instead. Other amazing visual transitions can be found inside the Transitions panel. Just pick one and drop it on the timeline, creating an independent blue transition clip that you have to put on a clip content through its entire duration. By default, this applies a fade-in transition, useful when introducing a clip content. If you need to apply it at the end of it, you can right-click on it and go to Reverse Transition. You can also change the transition length in order to change its speed as well. Next to the Transitions panel, the Effects panel collects several visual effects you can apply by dragging and dropping these on any clip. With the Properties panel open, you can click on the Effect letter to change its value while checking the video preview. Whereas to remove the effect, just right-click on it. You can also add great titles by going to Title twice above. Choose the text template on the left and then adjust its appearance on the right, including text font and style, content, text, and background color. This creates a new image inside the Project Files panel that you can import inside the timeline and edit it as seen for the other clips. You can also make advanced pieces of text if you own Inkscape or Blender in your computer. To save your project, use Control or Command and S. Your work is saved as OpenShot Project under a .osp file format. Whereas to export your final video, use Export Video above. On the dialog box, set Name, Destination Folder, and choose the profile to start from. At the bottom, set the video format, resolution, aspect ratio, and its quality. If you switch to the Advanced tab, you can choose to export both video and audio, or just one of the two. The last frame to take to stop rendering, and all the video and audio properties to use in detail. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel if you want to discover other great software completely for free.